Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Lord, there's a word here. It's your word. Father, bless us. Speak through these lips. Preach through these lips. Talk through these lips and talk to their souls, their hearts, their minds, their spirit. Lord Jesus, about your sacred, holy, perfect word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so if you turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4, it's the last chapter of 2 Timothy, we'll be covering verses 1 through 8. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. This message is going to be called, Fulfill Your Ministry. Fulfill your ministry. In other words, complete your ministry or complete the task that God has assigned to you before he created the heavens and the earth. Before he created the heavens and the earth, God has appointed you things to do for him every single day of your life. Now it's up to you whether you want to see the fullness of that plan revealed by being faithful and obedient to the small things that he reveals to you day in and day out until he gets you to where he wants you to go. So we're going to really just disclose Paul's life here because that's what he's writing about or from Paul and how we fit into that picture, okay? Fulfill your ministry. Everybody has a ministry. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. You have a ministry. You and you and you. Everyone has a ministry. Before I divulge, first off, the wicked people who work for their father, the devil, have a demonic ministry. And their ministry is to destroy the kingdom of God, to destroy you and I, right? But when we gave our life to Christ, we no longer work for our old master. <laughs> no longer our master, amen? Sometimes we fall into sin and we obey him from time to time, repent and come back to the true master who is Jesus. But now we're saved. We have a ministry. Everyone has a ministry, including the wicked, okay? Whether they know it or not, whether they're walking in it or not. Same thing with us. Whether we know it or are walking in it or not, we have a ministry. Amen? So turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4. We'll be covering verses 1 through 8. Give me a second. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through eight. Fulfill your ministry. Before I jump into this, because it's going to get deep. Like I said, everyone has a ministry. You don't need to be a pastor or a preacher, right? Or have some position in the church necessarily to have a ministry. You have a ministry and it, that ministry is been set up for you. You have a spiritual office. You have a spiritual office. Someone is watching your life, whether you acknowledge it or not, whether you believe in it or not. And so this kind of dives into your ministry may not be your earthly talents and gifts. They may not be. They may be. God could use anything, but they may not be. For me, it wasn't. I mean, I'm good at filmmaking, as you can see, I'm recording. He's using it, but not in the degree that I thought he was gonna use it. I thought I was gonna be a filmmaker, not just record myself, preach sermons. God called me to preach sermons, but he's using my films, me to film it, to help people, amen? Or reach people. So God may not be calling you to your earthly talents and gifts. He might use it from time to time, or it might just be an assist for you to do your real thing. And so what are the ministries that we have in the body of Christ? Obviously, shepherd, which is pastor, right? God's calling people to become pastors. There are different kinds of pastors. B 
Billy Graham had a different kind of pastoral ministry than being stationary in a local community somewhere or town or city or house, right? Billy Graham had an evangelical ministry, which was he had to evangelize. In other words, he had to evangelize and he was faithful. And that is a life that reflects a person who completely surrendered and submitted to God's plan for their life. Now, not all of our ministries are going to look like Billy Graham's being. We're not all called to evangelize the way he did it. Right. I think we're all called to evangelize, but maybe some more than others or to that big platform that he had. We're not all called to preach like he was called to preach. And so he, God used his physical talents and gifts but also blessed, blessed it with spiritual talents and gifts, in other words. So with that being said, some of us are called to be evangelists, just to go out and tell people about Jesus and invite them to church. It might, it, you might be obedient, but it might never, you might never become anyone that the world or even the church world sees as great or amazing. And you can still get a good job, my good and faithful servant, even if you've evangelized one person, right? Or f a few people throughout your lifetime. The point is, are you fulfilling the ministry that God has called you to? Some are called to be pastors of local churches. Some are called to be preacher evangelists. Some are called to be evangelists and go to different countries or to evangelize their community. Some are called to be prophets, right? Some are called to be healers. There's so many different spiritual gifts that God has called each person to. And God, as Paul is going to disclose here, his testimony of fulfilling his ministry that was predestined to him. So before we get started, are you fulfilling the ministry that God predestined to you? How do I know what I'm called to? Let me tell you something, folks. Give me a seed of a tree. I don't know what kind of seed it is until I plant it and start watering it every day with the word of God. Water yourself, you are a seed, water yourself every day with the word of God. And as you continue to water the seed that has been put into you after you accepted Christ, you get the seed when you accept Christ as your savior. Now all you have to do is water it every day. Grow in the knowledge and wisdom of God's word every day. Read your Bible, read your Bible, right? <laughs> and as you continue to seek his face, by reading your Bible, praying, fellowshipping, and all that stuff, naturally what begins to happen to the soil? Naturally, this, the, the, whatever tree or plant it is starts to come out. Now, we really can't tell what it is yet, right? But as we continue to seek the Lord and being watered by his word, we be, Jesus, God, brings the increase. Matter of fact, a tree or plant or bush or whatever it's supposed to be will only be as big as much as we water it. God is always ready to bring the increase, but we're not always ready to be watered with the word of God, right? So as we continue to water ourselves with God's word, naturally, then the leaves and the branches and eventually the fruit begin to reveal itself of what kind of tree it is. Amen? You're not going to know who God is calling you to be yet until you continue to water yourself. And it's to journey. I thought I was called to this. I thought I was called to that in this spiritual gifts. I have a various amounts of spiritual gifts, but then I realized one of my biggest strengths that I have is preaching and teaching. It starts to narrow down. And all I did was seek the Lord's water through his reading of his word every day. As you begin to continue to seek the Lord's face in his word, naturally, your calling, whatever that is, starts to become narrow. Because at one point I thought I was supposed to be a prophet. Sometimes God uses me as a prophet, but doesn't mean I was called to be a prophet. Sometimes God uses me as evangelist, doesn't mean I was called to be an evangelist, right? Every person has a specific calling, a gifting on their life, spiritually, that was given by God. Mine was teaching and preaching, Right? And they're just as equally as important. None of these are greater or lesser than each other. 
And so for my goal as I grow in Christ is to fulfill each and every assignment that God has given me throughout the day. I have a list on my phone in my notes of different sermons that the Lord has given me. This is another one. I have different, like, it's just like a huge list and he just keeps giving to it because I'm fulfilling it. He's not gonna reveal to you more of his will unless you start fulfilling what's already placed in front of you. Amen? You gotta do what's in front of you. And matter of fact, that's really what, as simple as that. Every day, you just keep doing what's in front of you. And before you know it, you begin to do greater works. They just become greater and greater. And you're like, oh, it's kind of normal to me, but it's not to others. So without further ado, let's get started. Second Timothy chapter four, verses one through eight. Fulfill your ministry. Amen. I solemnly charge you before God and Christ Jesus. I charge you. <laughs> <laughs> who is going to judge the living and the dead and because of his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be ready in season and out of season rebuke correct encourage with great patience gonna need a lot of patience for for this and teaching for the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine but according to their own desires will multiply each teachers for themselves because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths. But as for you, exercise self-control in everything. Endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am ready, already being poured out as a drink offering and the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race or assignment. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not one to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. Father, again, bless your word. Heal us, guide us according to your truth and promises. These are your promises. For, help us fulfill our ministry, what you've called each of us to do. Each of us has a different calling, so we shouldn't compare ourselves. And each of us work those different callings out differently. Amen? And so it's really foolish to compare yourself. So God has pre-established a calling for you and I each and every day. I like to think of God like Santa Claus. But every day is Christmas, right? Every day he has things for us to do for him. And when we do those things, it blesses us it blesses others and it glorifies him. But it's his work. It's not our work. It's his work that he has predestined for us to do. I've predestined this path for you. Now walk in it. Do the things that I'm calling you to do each and every day. Sad to say there are multiple Christians doing a bunch of religious things that God never assigned for them. Did not predestine for them. Obviously, there's an unsaved world out there. Jesus paid all the penalty of all the sin and all the debt before God, right? to each person, even if they don't accept him as Lord and Savior, right? Even if they don't want him. Every debt has been paid. Sad to say, people don't go to hell because God didn't pay their debt. They go to hell because they refuse to cash the check of getting their sins forgiven, <laughs> right? So with that being said, but you and I, okay, our debts are paid, but sad to say, a lot of us wake up every day, we're like, oh, we're sad. You ever seen a sad Christian? They might have the Holy Spirit, right? You ever seen a sad Christian? You ever seen an unjoyful Christian, a bitter Christian? In other words, they've accepted Christ as Savior. They're going to heaven when they die from this life. However, they're not walking in his ways. They're not walking in the predestination that he had for them, the yellow brick road that I've set up for you. They're not walking in it. Maybe from time to time they walk in it. And it's the only thing that can fully satisfy us is doing God's will, right? I don't know about you, but I want my seed and my fruit of the trees, that, the things that I do here on earth for the Lord, being the Lord's plan for my life to be fully grown, right? I want it to be fully grown. 
I don't want to be like the Christian who's like, yeah, I get into heaven and I get scolded. <laughs> right? I get punished, right? I don't want to be doing my own thing and doing my own works because it's all going to get burned up. I want to do his works. Amen. And so God's like, he's giving me more things to do because I'm faithful with the little things that he's given me to do. I want you to do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, preach this, preach that. You know, I want you to go here, go there, pray for this person, do this. And he's giving me more things to do, like the parable about the talents. And then there's these bitter Christians and, I, and they're like, God's not doing moving in my life. I'm like, what has he put in front of you that you're not doing? Right? And I have found when you walk in God's promises for you, when you're doing his will for you, that he's predestined for you, Man, he fills you with joy, peace, patience, kindness, the fruits of the spirit. I mean, and he blesses you physically. It's just awesome. It's amazing. I'm like, man, I'm so happy. And so when I look at bitter Christians, I'm like, you're not doing the will of God. You're doing your own will. Or you're not even doing it. You're just doing living in sin. <laughs> sin is really just rebelling against God. It's not just breaking the commandments. It's just not doing God's will. That's what sin is. I like how Jesus says it. Oh, the joy it is for those who serve the Lord. Those who do his will. Right? There's a lot of Christians doing things, but they're not doing what they were called to do. That's why we get bitter Christians. We shouldn't have them if we're all obeying. But we have them because we're not doing his will. We're doing our own will. We're doing a lot of religious Christian things, but they're not God's plan for our life. And God's never going to bless that. He only blesses his will. And when we submit to his will and do his will, amen. That's why the wicked world, the unsaved world are not happy. And that's why Christians aren't happy because they're not doing God's will. And those Christians who are doing God's will, they're always full of joy, peace and contentment and, and fullness and mercy and grace. Isn't that cool? Because they're, they're doing what God called them to do. It's sad to say there's a lot of ministers they think, oh, I'm called to be an evangelist when they were called to be a pastor. I'm called to be a pastor when they were called to be an evangelist, right? <laughs> or called to be a prophet or something else. So don't get your roles mixed. You got to really seek God on this, all right? What are you called to do? Just keep seeking his face and it'll be told each and every day what you're called to do. Let's break this down verse by verse. I solemnly charge you before God in Christ. What he's saying here is I'm holding you accountable by the word of God. I'm holding you accountable by the spirit of God. God is my witness and all the angels in Jesus. God is my witness. You are called to do something. You better do it. You are being held accountable. You and I, we've accepted Christ. Great. Awesome. Right? I charge you, Paul says, to do the will of God for your life. Because in the end, he's going to judge the living and the dead. Those who did not serve him or accept him and those who did not do his will. They accepted him, but they didn't do his will. I charge you to do the will of God. You better be doing the will of God and not your own Christian thing. You better be making sure that's God's will for your life because of his appearing of his kingdom. So Paul is talking to Timothy here. Like I said, not everyone's called to be a pastor. To Timothy, he says, preach the word. You better preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready in season and out of season, not just to preach the word, but to rebuke, correct, encourage with great patience and teaching. Those of you who are called to be pastors, you better be ready in season and out of season. You better be ready to correct, rebuke. You better have great patience with people. You better be ready to teach any given time. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but according to their own desires. You better make sure those desires are not yours. They're God's desires for you. God's desires will never lead you into breaking his commandments. They may lead you into doing strange things that don't make sense to you, for example, go in this place and start praying for people. Go in this place and wait for this person and then tell them about Jesus, right? You're like, oh, no, that's weird. I wouldn't do that. It's strange. But, it's, but it must be God because it's godly and it's something I wouldn't do, right? <laughs> Normally. 
Make sure your desires are not your own. There are so many Christians, as I told you before, that are not doing the will of God. They're doing a bunch of Christian things. It's not God's will. They're in, they're in the wrong office. They're preaching or teaching when they should be evangelizing. They're evangelizing when they should be preaching and teaching, right? Not everyone's called to be a preacher. Not everyone's called to be a pastor. Not everyone's called to be a teacher. Not everyone's called to be a worship leader person. Not where everyone's called to be an evangelist. Not everyone's called to be a prophet. You better make sure you're watering and seeking the Lord's face before you go and start just appointing yourself to do these things. That's where Jesus says, many will say to me on the last day, were we doing this in your name and that in your name? We did all this ministry work. You know, I was doing this pastoral work. I was doing this evangelist work. I was doing this prophet work. I was doing this, that, and the other. And Jesus says, I did not call you particularly to do that. I called you to the mission field. I called you to fill in the blank, vice versa, this and that. You didn't seek my face. You sought your own human desires. So not just because we label it as Christian, just because we think it's Christian, just because it looks Christian doesn't actually mean it's Christ. Right? And so this is what they end up doing. They multiply teachers for themselves. They, they look for teachers that agree with them. This is like the world. You know, I'm a witch. I'm a good witch, though. And so I'm going to look for, you know, Christians make me feel bad. So I'm going to look for Christians that agree that I can be a good witch and a Christian. <laughs> Sad to say there are, there are people that do that. And there are people that support them that claim to be Christian. I've actually somehow ran across. I forget where I saw it. Obviously, it was online. <laughs> I ran across Christian it was like a it was like a Christian dating thing for couples like they were sharing each other's spouses and I was like that's not the bible just because it says Christian on the door or whatever they title themselves just because they say that doesn't mean they're actually from God doesn't mean they're doing what the bible commands them to be doing so you have to be careful they disguise themselves as sheep but they are wolves we have to come under the authority of God's word. I'm going to be honest. There's a lot in this Bible I don't like. I'm not going to tell you every little thing what it is, but there's a lot in it I disagree, just flat out. Some I just disagree just because I disagree and I have good reasons for. <laughs> and, and some I have really bad reasons for because I'm sinful <laughs> and I just disagree. But if I'm to take God's word at face value, I have to submit my flesh and also just my opinions to it. Since one person said, I don't like reading the Bible because it makes me feel a certain way. It's exposing your demons. It's exposing your flesh. It's exposing you. That's why I don't like reading it. But if this is really the authoritative of God's word, then I better submit to it, even if I disagree, even if my opinions contradict it, even if the world and the culture contradict it, I better submit to it, right? I better get my opinions and my flesh and under submission to it. If this is truly God's word. And I would say the same for you. You call yourself a Christian, you're going to struggle. You're not going to live perfectly to it, but you better start trying to. You better start praying to. You better start saying, God, crucify my flesh and get me under control. Submitted to your word. By the way, when you and I are submitted to God's word, check this out. <laughs> you have the authority of God's word flowing through you through you. It's not your authority. It's given authority. God will only, matter of fact, give you authority if you're submitted to his will, as we'll get into, because they have an itch to hear what they want to hear. They hate God's word. They hate submitting to God. They're like a, a loose camel, a female camel 
who's on her period or whatever <laughs> she's she she'll obey everybody but her actual master verse 4 they will turn away from hearing the truth and will turn aside to myths man i've seen so many christian myths obviously the world has all these myths but i've seen christian myths man this world is really demonic this world is really evil there's a lot of horrible things going on and teachings going on especially that are not biblical or sound <laughs> right i don't have the time to get into all of it because it's endless verse 5 but as for you exercise self-control in everything endure hardships do the work of the evangelist fulfill your ministry so to some degree, everyone is called to be an evangelist. We're called to fulfill the ministry that God has appointed each of us. Everyone has one. The question is, are you fulfilling God's purpose for your life or are you fulfilling your purpose for your life? How do you know? Keep soaking in God's word and then it will be revealed to you what you should, should do. People are looking for... The people of the world are looking for sinful pleasures to satisfy their deep longing. They'll never find it. They'll never obtain it. They'll never have it. It's sad to say the Christian is looking for a bunch of religious things to do. They'll never have it. They'll never obtain it. They'll never be satisfied. Did you know the only one who can satisfy you is God? Okay, you accepted Jesus as Savior. You will only be filled in the Spirit when you are doing His will. You will only find satisfaction in the will of God. You will never find peace or satisfaction or clarity or hope or love or joy outside the will of God for your life. So many Christians are doing all these Christian things. They have no peace, they have no joy, they have no hope, they have no satisfaction. Can't get no satisfaction outside of God's will for your life. Let me say that again. You can never find peace or satisfaction or hope or joy or contentment outside of God's will for your life. That only is in God's will. I'm doing all these Christian things I'm going to church, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. And I feel more lost than when I gave my life to Jesus. Because you're not doing God's will. You're doing your will for God. You're trying to create and fabricate something. Well, I'm really talented and gifted in this. Well, I'm really good at this, people say. It doesn't matter. <laughs> God wants you to let go. Jesus said, I did not come to do my will. So many people want to paint and dance and do all these things that God has not called them to do. Maybe God did call them to do that. Maybe he didn't. How do you know? His blessings of satisfaction and peace and joy will be on their life. They'll be like, man, I just feel so at peace when I do this, whatever that is. I feel so filled in the spirit. I, I, I get so nourished when I do this. It blesses me and it blesses others and God gets the glory. It's a very dangerous thing to be serving the Lord in all of these capacities and not have his blessing on it, not ever have peace, right? Matter of fact, if you read the book of Galatians, letter to the Galatians, Paul talks about walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh. If you're walking in the flesh, you're always going to be empty. If you're walking in the spirit, you'll have some satisfaction. And these Judaizers, they were, they were walking in the flesh and their sinful nature was just comparison and gossip and blaming and just judging and condemnation. They had no grace and mercy because they were not doing God's will for their life. How do you do God's will? Continue to seek his face. Continue to seek his face. And out of that, an overflow of righteousness and good deeds will flow out of you without you knowing. 
We all have a ministry. I don't know about you, but I wanna open every gift that God has for me down here. I wanna do whatever God is calling me to do down here. For example, he's like, I have a hundred things for you to do today, Jeremy. And your joy meter, your joy meter, your peace meter, your happiness meter, whatever you wanna call it, is gonna be based on how much you wanna fulfill of that. For example, let's just say everyone had, God had a hundred things for every person to do each day, whatever it was. Wash the dishes, clean the house, take out the trash, love your spouse, play with your kids, preach or teach or go to this Bible study, whatever it is, right? It's all gonna look different for me, to each of us, but whatever it is, he's like, I have this plan for you. And you wake up and you only decide to do one of those things. Like I said, it's your happiness meter, right? How happy do you think you're gonna be? Not very happy. How much peace are you gonna think you're gonna have? Not very much, right? But when you start to go, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do a little more, right? I'm gonna do like 10 things for the Lord you're going to have a little bit more happiness, more peace, and more presence of God in your life. Your happiness meter, your peace meter, they're all part of the same thing. It's based off how much of that hundred things that you want to fulfill for the Lord. A lot of us have not accepted Jesus. They have no peace, no happiness, none, none so ever. And they look for it in the world, and the world will never satisfy them. The devil can't give what he doesn't have satisfaction <laughs> that's why he's still in hell whining and complaining and his disciples are in hell too whining and complaining read the book of revelations they're in hell blaspheming god because they have no satisfaction <laughs> but when we repent from the devil's kingdom when we come into the kingdom of god and we start to fulfill his ministry his ministry for our life not our ministry for our life or our will for our life we start to fulfill his plans for our life you start to want to do more for him. You start to want to serve him more and fulfill more. And not to mention, he just doesn't have this thing, like a hundred things for you to do today. He starts to grab other people's things that they're not doing for him and give it to you. And he says in the parable of the talents, two of them were faithful, that last person wasn't. And he says, I enter the joy of your Lord. What is the joy? The joy of the Lord is to do more for the Lord. The joy of the Lord is to do more for the Lord. Isn't that cool? So like, I had this hundred things for you to do, but you went above and beyond. You out, you, every day you woke up, you did all of it. So I gave you more. I gave you the responsibility of others who didn't want to serve me. The joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord is how much you want to serve him and do his will. <sighs> Amen. Verse six, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time for my departure is close. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have finished the appointed things that God had me to do. In addition, I believe, Paul did a lot for the Lord. He obeyed the Lord a lot. So the Lord gave him a lot to do. I have kept the faith. There is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved his appearing. We saw him, we believed in him, and we sought him every day of our life. David says, I'd rather be a servant in the house of my God. Washing dishes, being a doorkeeper, opening the door for people, right? I'd rather be a doorkeeper, opening the door for people, closing the door for people. I'd be more, I'd rather be a janitor than be doing my own thing, than be serving my flesh, than be having the pleasures of the riches of the world. Right? Then to technically having a big ministry. That might be God's plan for your life. However, you will only find satisfaction doing God's will. Solomon was the wisest, smartest, richest, I don't know, most handsome. He had everything. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines, which he could also sleep around with. He had streets filled of gold. He was arrayed in the best clothing of their day. He had all the friends you could ever ask for. He had everything. He was the richest man. He could do whatever he wanted. And he writes the saddest book in the entire Bible, Ecclesiastes. It's all vanity. It's all meaningless. 
It's all vanity. It's all meaningless if you're not serving God, if you're not doing his will. He couldn't get no satisfaction. Can't get no satisfaction because he stopped serving God. And then he ends, he writes seven chapters, and then he ends with this last, like, literally sentence. Repent and do God's will. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Do his will. The reason why there's so many unhappy people in this world, because they're not doing God's will. They're doing their own will. They're serving themselves. And they're very bitter and miserable, huh? We as Christians can do the same thing. I could do a bunch of religious things. It's not God's will. Jesus says, on the last day, many will say to me, didn't we prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, heal the sick, visit the widows? Didn't we do this in your name? And Jesus says, depart from me, you workers of evil, iniquity. What is he saying? You did not do my will. You did your own will. You didn't do the Father's will. You appointed your own deeds that you would give him. And he says it's evil. With all that being said, let's finish up. Let's wrap this up. Fulfill your ministry. What does that mean? Your ministry is not something that you conjured up. It's not something that some institution gave you. It's not something that comes from man. Your ministry comes from the living God. When you accept Christ as Savior, and as you begin to soak in God's word, your calling begins to burst forth out of you. Fulfill your ministry. Everyone has a ministry. You don't need to be a pastor. You don't need to be this great prophet. You just need to continue to seek God's face. And as you do that, an overflowing of his works will come out of you. Fulfill the calling that God has for you. You have to run your own race, as Paul says. Everyone has to run their own race. Run your race so you can obtain the prize of eternal life. Do what the Lord is telling you to do. Don't do what you want to do. Don't do what they want you to do, whoever they are, even if they are someone that you love or whatever. Do what the Lord is calling you to do. Fulfill the calling he has on your life. And until you do that, you will not have satisfaction. You will not have peace. You will not have joy. You'll just be bitter and complaining like everybody else. Bitter, complaining, compare, comparing, gossiping, and slandering. <laughs> you know, people, <laughs> I'll end here, I promise. <laughs> A person who's bitter and complaining, slandering people is someone who is unfulfilled. That's all it is. That's all it is, is someone who is not doing God's will. God's will is the only will that can fulfill you, that can fill you with peace, joy, and love, and purpose. And so, like I said, I've met so many Christians, they're doing something, they're not doing God's will, they're doing that and they're bitter. Like, how are you running a Bible study and bitter? How are you preaching and bitter? How are you even bitter? If you say you're serving the Lord, how are you bitter? If you're serving the Lord and his purpose for your life, you will not be bitter. You will be happy. You will be joyful. You will find contentment and peace. But if you are serving what you think God wants you to do or what you want to do or the world, you will be bitter. You will be unsatisfied. You better make sure that God's calling you to whatever that is in that ministry, that that ministry is from him. You better make sure that you're serving his purpose and not your own. You better make sure that was given by God <laughs> and not man or yourself. Everyone has a ministry. Some of us are called to, to do great things that the world can see. Some of us are not, and they could still be as great and it could still change lives, and it could still be a bigger impact than those that are being seen. God can satisfy you whatever he's calling you to do. Pick tree bark. If you're picking tree bark for the Lord and he told you pick that tree bark, you're gonna, he can just fill you up in his goodness. Wash toilets, whatever it is. 
It's good. Only God can satisfy you. Amen? Only God can please you. Amen? No one else can satisfy you or please you. Fulfill your ministry in the Lord. Amen? Whatever that is. How do I know? Just keep seeking his face. That's all I do every day. I just keep seeking his face, seeking his face. That's all I do. And I am full of joy, full of contentment. But when I start running off and doing my own religious thing, running off and doing sinful things, I am very unsatisfied, very unhappy. And everyone around me knows it. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys today. Well, for now. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. This is fulfill your ministry. God is like Santa Claus. He's got something for you every day to, to bring your, your hopes and your dreams and just to pass, right? That he puts into you. And he wants to see his children happy. His, his people should be the happiest people you should ever find. Should be. If we're doing his will. Amen. Thank you guys for listening. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. Let's pray. Father, bless this word. Bless them. Help us fulfill what you have called each of us to do. Because only you and your will can satisfy us. Not our own. We pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And God bless.